Hello, welcome to today's discussion on orizers, which are known as ear irons. But before we get started, if you wind up liking this video, please select thumbs up and click subscribe. I'm currently doing about two videos a week, and that way you will be updated when a new video comes out. Now, on to today's discussion. As I said, orizers are also known as ear irons. So what are orizers? Orizer is Dutch. It literally means ear iron, or for ear, and iser for iron. It was most commonly worn in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. However, they were um, still used occasionally up into the early 20th century. An ariser is a wire that's wrapped around the back of the head and goes up and over the ears, ends right down about the end of the earlobe, and it's what helped stiffen and shape a coif. And because it's helping shape the coif, it goes actually underneath the coif. And the only part that sticks out are the very ends. So the ends might be decorative. And then the, the wire is pinned to the underneath side of the coif. These were typically made of brass. Copper and lead were also used, but both copper and lead tend to be softer metals. And then that makes it easier to bend the metal, to shape it, but then also when you wear it all day, the metal gets warm and then it may not keep its shape as firmly as it should. And as I said, the tips were decorated or could be decorated. Here is one example of an ariser actually listed as being a headdress frame and if you look at the description in the Museum of London they actually have this listed as being the frame for a French hood which is why it's listed as being from the Tudor era but if you look at the design it looks like an ariser. You'll see more examples later which will then help you figure out that this looks more like an ariser rather than the frame to a French hood. The main things that tell me that this is an ariser is if you look in the middle of the, you've got the hoop going down, but then there's a little loop in the middle, and then there's little balls at the end. To give you an idea, here's an ariser that I have made, and here's the, the loop in the middle, and then I have a pearl at the very end. The description that the Museum of London has for this it says it's a copper alloy wire curved headdress frame, which has been twisted once on each side. The ends of the frame are capped with knobs of solder, probably to stop the sharp wire from digging into the wearer, wearer's head. I don't know about digging into the wearer's head because where the arisers end, they kind of, you could press them into your cheeks, but you would just have a sharp pointy end right here on the side of your cheek. So I would think since that part is what's being seen that that's why they decorated it so you didn't just have a sharp pointy metal ending right in the middle of your cheekbone. And this particular one, it's from, it says circa 16th century and it was made out of copper alloy. And it's about four, a little over four inches tall and a little over six inches wide. Here's another ariser that's listed as a headdress, also at the Museum of London, also listed as being Tudor and being described as being a part of a French hood frame from the 16th century. This one um, is also made of wire, but this wire is made from a lead alloy. And again, it's got the, the little loops in the middle of the wire. It's got the balls at the end. And if you look at the very end where the balls are, there's a smaller thin wire wrapped around the ends. Keep that in mind. We'll discuss that more later. And here are some more examples of arisers in museums. All of these and on the next page are found in the museum. I mispronounced this, I'm sorry. Boymans. And 
a lot of these either say they're just circa 1575 or 16th century. You can see a lot of similarities. There are some differences. The main thing is you've got the curve, which will go along the um, backside of the head um, near the nape of the neck. And then the bend goes up and over the ears. And then the balls at the very ends of the wires go right along the cheekbone, right in front of the earlobe. Some of them have little loops where the loops were soldered onto the wire. Others just have the wire that's been curled around to create the loops. And here are some more examples from the same museum, which is in the Netherlands. Here are some examples of risers in paintings. This is very rare because normally the risers would be underneath the coif or some other headwear, so you would not see it. But on the left-hand side is a painting by Warner Jacobs, and it's a painting called A Man Cutting Tobacco. It's a more elaborate picture with a man and a woman, but I've just zeroed in on the woman because, well, that's what we're focusing on. And if you see, she's got her braids around the crown of her head, and then the oriser goes underneath the braid, up and over the ear, and then curves around and ends right about where the end of the earlobe is. And then where those loops are and then bend right above the ears, that's where you would put ribbon or something else to tie it up on top of your head. And those ties sit in front of the braid that goes around the crown of your head. On the right hand side of the paint, um, on the right hand side of the page is another example. You don't see the whole oriser, you just see the front part that goes in front of the ear. In this painting, it's called a lighting study of an elderly woman in a white cap. It was painted by Rembrandt um, about 1640. And here are a few more examples. You can't see the oriser like you did on the last page, but you can see the ends. If you look on the left-hand side in the portrait of Katharina, I do not know how to pronounce that, say if I mispronounced that, I'm sorry, please correct me. It was painted by Rembrandt about 1657. And if you look um, on hers, you've got two right here on either side. And it looks like there's also another wire that comes right about here. And then on the right hand side is a painting by Caspar Netcher. Um, it was just painted in the 17th century. And again, it's hidden underneath the coif, but if you look at the very end of the coif, you'll see where there's a point, and then there's a ball right underneath that point, and that is where the end of the riser is. And more examples, just like we saw, where you see the coif over top of the riser. The riser is just creating the frame, the shape, to help stiffen up the, the coif that they're wearing. And if you look on the left-hand side in the painting um, known as Woman Eating, it was painted by Gabriel Metsu about 1661. And if you look at the very end of her coif, you can see there's, um, it looks like two little pearls right at the bottom. And then on the right-hand side is a portrait of a woman. It is painted um, circa 1599. It's at the I'll try to pronounce this correctly, the Reeks Museum. And if you look closely, she's got wires with beading, um, looks like pearls right here and also right here at the temple. So with hers, it looks like her riser is actually splitting off, coming down around here, but then also providing extra support up here at the temple. And you'll see other paintings like this where you don't see the woman's ears, but then you'll see pearls hanging down. It could be some other bead, but usually it seems to be pearls. And so it almost looks like she's wearing earrings, but it's actually not, they're not actually earrings. They're actually the decoration on the end of their risers as seen here. You can see the pearls are hanging down, but they're not actually on her ears. And this is an example that was made by the Jamestown Settlement um, American Revolution Museum at Yorktown. 
So this is a replica or riser that was made, but if you look on the left-hand side is um, an riser that was put together by a blacksmith. And then in the middle, she has the coif over top. And if you look on the right-hand side, they've zoomed in to show where they've taken a straight pin and pinned the coif to the riser. And one example of an riser that was found in America at Martin's Hundred, it was an early 17th century settlement near Jamestown. The skull of a woman was found wearing an ariser. So they believe she was probably Dutch because these arisers were primarily a Dutch thing to wear. And she is believed to have died during the 1622 Powhatan Uprising. Here is an an example of an ariser that was found in a Dutch graveyard. It was near Ro Roches Chapel in Amersfoort, which is in the Netherlands. And the skeleton was excavated. It was determined that she died in her mid twenties around 1640 based on the head gear that was found. And the neat thing with having the ariser there on her head helped to actually secure some of the hair to her skull. And so that's how they were able to determine that she was blonde. Now, if you're not a blacksmith, but you'd like to make a simple riser, here is just a quick and easy way to make an riser. It could be more elaborate if you wish to make it like that. But this is, if you're just starting out and want to know the basics on how to make an riser. I would recommend using a 14 to 18 gauge wire. I will be showing you how to make the riser with 12 gauge wire because that's what I have currently available. You want to make it approximately 22 to 24 inches long. Part of that depends on the size of your head, going around the base, around the nape of your neck, over your ears, down to your cheekbones, right above the earlobe but part of it also depends on how you wish to design your riser, which I'll get more into that in a minute. You'll want a bowl or a ball, something round, ribbon, preferably non-slippery ribbon, pliers, and these are optional, but if you wish to make your riser a little more decorative, then you want beads, smaller craft wire, and possibly craft glue. So for your measurements, first you want to measure from just from your ear, think right where the bottom of your earlobe is, measure around up and over the ear, and then back along the nape of your neck, around to the other side, up above the ear. And then once you've measured from up above the ear to up above the ear, you'll want to add 10 inches no more than like 12 inches to that because that's the part that goes from above the ear down. And then if you get a little more decorative and want to add the, the loop up here and any loops down here, then that's where the extra one to two inches come into play. So once you've done your measurement from above your ear, down and around to the other side of your head, above your ear, added your 10 to 12 inches, go ahead and cut your wire. And then from here, depending on if you did, um, if you just added 10 inches to that measurement from ear to ear, then you'll want to measure five inches from both ends of the wire. If you did 12 inches, then you'll want to measure seven inches from the ends of each wire. And then once you've measured your five or your seven inches from the end of each wire, you'll want to put a bend that's going to look like a right angle for the moment, but put a bend in your wire. Now, if you're adding loops to um, for laces, then you'll want to use pliers to wrap the right angles around one at a time to create the loops. Another option is to solder, solder the loops onto the wire or another option is to use some smaller wire and to attach the smaller wire to their riser. As you can possibly see here in the camera, this one I've just done a loop in my wire 
or as I said, you could solder the wire or solder a loop to the wire, or you can take a smaller wire and loop it around and attach it right here to create your loop for your lace. Next, you'll want to use a bowl or some other round object to make the center portion of the wire between the two right angles round. So here's one right angle, here's the other right angle, and then this section right here that will go along the bottom part of your head near the nape of your neck, underneath the braid, that part you want to be round. Next, tie laces through the loops or onto the right angles. So as you can see, I have my laces on top and here are the right angles. So fit the wire onto your head and then you want to move the wires down just in front of your ears. The tips of the wires should be even with the bottom of your earlobes when the riser is completed. Then remove the wire from your head. You want to even up the sides. As I found when I was doing this, I had like one side a little higher up than the other. So once you've got it mostly where you want it, take it off your head, readjust it so that both the left and the right side are even. And if one side tends to be a little bit longer than the other, this is the time where you want to trim it. And then for the tips of the wires, you can either just use pliers to curl up the end to make it a round end, or you can use a bead, put the bead onto the wire. You can glue it to the wire as you feed it through the wire. And then um, for extra decoration, that's where, if you remember at the very beginning where I mentioned that we would come back to it later, you can use a smaller wire to wrap around the very end and then add just that little extra bit of decoration with your pearl and your wire. It helps to secure the bead as well as adding decoration. If you'd like more information on the risers, they continued to be used in certain regions of the ne Netherlands into the early 20th century, specifically in Friesland and Zeeland. And for more information on Dutch risers from the 17th to the 20th centuries, I recommend visiting this website. It has lots of pictures and lots of extra information. And just as an example, at the bottom of the page, you can see there is a silver riser that was made in 1919. And if you have more questions or want to see some of the pictures that were referenced here, here's the my Works Cited page.
you have any questions, please feel free to ask and subscribe.